Hi everyone and welcome to this podcast recorded and produced by the Royal College of Occupational Therapists. This is one of a series of podcasts which really focus on hearing and sharing the career narratives of our diverse workforce and highlight a whole range of possibilities in occupational therapy. My name is Hannah Spencer and I'm an occupational therapist that's had the absolute pleasure and privilege of facilitating and capturing these conversations with members of our occupational therapy community. My name is Rachel Stonewall and I'm an occupational therapy lecturer at the University of Liverpool. Part of my role at the university is I'm also the co-chair of the BAME staff network. So let's rewind right back to the beginning. What drew you to occupational therapy? Uh, well, I was reflecting on this actually. Um, so I didn't really know what I wanted to do when I was doing my A-levels. Um, I'd had an interest in psychology, I was doing psychology A-level, um, wanted to work with people in some capacity, but still didn't really know what I wanted to do. But perhaps I was very fortunate um, that my dad was a careers advisor, and so um, so did point me in the direction of um, occupational therapy might be a good fit for you. Um, there was a computer programme that you did when you put down your skills and your uh, interests and what qualifications you were doing and it matched me to an occupational therapist I had opportunity to uh, spend some time with occupational therapists and um, th- thought that it was a good fit for me um, and then went on to do my OT degree I was just 18 when I started at university so qualified at 21 and went straight into um, into work um, as an occupational therapist uh, and have stayed in the occupational therapy profession. Um, however, I worked uh, first of all clinically and then moved into um, the academic world. Can you tell us a bit more about that journey, kind of what's contributed to the flow? So when I started um uh, as an occupational therapist, I was on a rotational post and I was really, really fortunate that there was both mental health and physical as well. So I had quite um, a good opportunity to work in, in different settings um, and then had opportunity to to focus um, in hand therapy, which, which is where um, my uh, skills developed really um, I really enjoyed working in hand therapy rheumatology uh, plastics uh, because there was a great opportunity of working with people from pediatrics to elderly and you were still I felt had opportunity to work with both mental health and physical health as well um, and then I would say I, the the organisation that I worked for, the team I worked in were very nurturing and um, and they really saw the value in continued professional development and networking um, both at a regional and a national level as well. So it did give me opportunities to then um, develop my continued professional development in completing some master's modules in hand therapy um, and with that then um, developed some links with the, the university um, and also becoming a specialist in hand therapy meant that um, I would go to do guest lecturing at, at different universities and then that really developed my interest in, in working in, in academia and then actually I suppose that bend in the curve in the in the river um, was that I actually had my first child. I was on maternity leave, and it perhaps gives you time to think a little bit. She says in between looking for the <laughs> looking after a baby, um, but I think just perhaps pausing from being um, you know full time in a work environment uh, meant that was could have a look at different opportunities and perhaps what fitted with my next steps on my uh, journey perhaps it gave chance then to think about what my skills were perhaps what my values were what were the next challenges what were the next perhaps opportunities and that's when I moved into 
um, working at the university. Can we talk a little bit about those challenges? Is that okay? Have there been any yeah. boulders along the way? Yeah, sure. And again, probably reflecting a little about my own journey. Um, coming from uh, being a, 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 a non-white person in a profession which is predominantly white, um, men, I think at university, perhaps on practice placement, there were some occasions when there were some boulders, some patients' reaction, um, inter- interaction with me and how well how my supervisor supported me in, in those situations, really developing different strategies myself. Um, thinking about those challenges really um so I definitely think that was perhaps the boulder and, and working with um developing my own um understanding of of interactions with people and how there may be some challenges really um I probably say another boulder um is working part time and I think that that's perhaps can be um, a challenge to others as well in that if you're in an organization and most people work full-time um, then sometimes that can be challenging if you work in a different way to others mm-hmm. um, I've perhaps had to understand that that is okay if I have a different work pattern to other people and perhaps just um, understanding that it doesn't mean I'm not working as hard as everybody else. Um, have, having to be a really effective communicator is a real skill when you're part-time as well and understanding how to uh, delegate as well because you may not be available for m- meetings, et cetera, and having to delegate some of that feedback that you give to uh, the team. So you mentioned about kind of your support and your supervision along the way. Um, yeah. I guess that links in with the environment around you. How has your environment enabled or restricted that career journey for you? Yeah, I think I've been very, very fortunate. Um, I think I mentioned before that uh, as a, in my early career, the team was really um, innovative and um, and actually my supervisor, but the rest of the team members were part of regional um, RCOT uh, groups they were part of a national at a national level as well and they saw the value um so i think that they were very supportive so actually guided me in understanding um opportunities continued professional development opportunities and and seeing that that was valuable to the team as well so they were would, would grant me time away from clinical practice mm-hmm. to enable that also, they were really good role models as well because um, they really promoted n- networking and engaging with the professional body and um, and seeing that as a positive for the team because you brought back information, but also you fed in. Um, and, and also prom- promoting that for the junior members of the team. So it wasn't something that you had to become a leader or a clinical specialist in your area to be able to feed in um you know as a a, so it would be called a band five now as a band five Mm -hmm. it was something that was promoted to me to be part of the 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 um the meetings and indeed to you know feed into it if I had any thoughts or questions or um ideas that's really important as well isn't it uh it kind of acknowledges the value that you bring and and of you as an individual and your skills and experiences that you bring to your role yeah absolutely and I think there was definite value about those um transferable skills so I think I mentioned I've worked in mental health as well as um a physical setting so seeing the value in transferring those skills um I we mentioned in a way that I come straight from school but within the team there were some people that had trained um uh, is a as a mature student and so they had past work and life experience to bring to the table and that was really valued as well so definitely I think it, it was empowered me as a as an occupational therapist um, and I hope that it's enabled me to empower others as well um, to, to 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 really acknowledge what their skills are and how they can be part of something to to make change. Absolutely. Is there any way in the in that your environment has restricted your career journey? Oh, so so part of my journey was 
during Agenda for Change. And there was a lot of, some people felt quite dis- disgruntled by that process and how um, they were valued, not within the occupational therapy team, but as um, a part of the, uh, as an occupational therapist within Agenda for Change. <laughs> um, and so I think that environment was quite challenging because people felt undervalued and didn't feel that they were being listened to by um, the senior leadership team. So again, not the occupational therapy leadership team, but the senior leadership team um, within uh, the trust. Um, so I think that environment was was challenging um, mm-hmm. because there was definitely a feeling of um, frustration. When people are feeling frustrated, um, it then means that perhaps uh, the that the the opportunities to to nurture each other um have become more challenging because you haven't got the energy because you're going through this process so I can definitely see if people are going through a period of change within their um organization um I think that environment could could definitely be very challenging for people Mm -hmm. it's been more kind of broader systems and processes yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's probably one of the reasons why thinking about my own development is, has gone from um, thinking about the, the micro, so the individual, to, to moving on to the me, so the community. Um, mm-hmm. and, and then I suppose looking at the macro, like looking at it nationally as well. Um, so I think my experience of um, the challenges when you're working in the environment which is changing has led me to understand about structures and frameworks and and um, being part of something so how can we develop to ensure that there aren't barriers for for, for people mm-hmm. um, and that's that's probably led to my um, well, has has led to my um, being part of the the BAME community um, in this in well both both as occupational therapist but also as an um, a member of the university as well. And I guess that links into you know I was going to ask um, do you feel that you've been able or you are able to bring your authentic and best self to occupational therapy? And I guess that links into that. I think I've been been fortunate in that I suppose looking at my lens has has given me opportunity to to create and and have an opportunity to be my authentic self Mm -hmm. so be that perhaps is within the organizations so within the OT teams I've worked in um, perhaps to have um, discussions with people about um, some of the authentic self for me being some somebody who's from uh, an afro-caribbean um mi- mixed culture um that that might not be within my actual team but it's something that perhaps you're looking wider so with that it might be the organization that you're working within so you may be working in a hospital trust that has a staff networking group or you may be l- looking at your professional group to um support you in your authentic self so i definitely think that's the change for me is understanding that within my in my community within the workplace i may not have the opportunity to have those shared discussions so it's seeing where i can get those opportunities and i think that i was fortunate in that when i started off in my career that my team saw that as valuable to to seek support within uh, different groups. So be that was more to do with your clinical speciality, actually, that the that um that the 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 team was working with, but they saw the value in it. And probably the change in my lens has been to move away from thinking about it as a clinical speciality to more thinking about it for my uh, particular interests really so uh, looking at EDI um, and so that has then seen my, me look at uh, networking available within 
occupational therapy, but also within my um, institution that I work for as well. Is there anything that's helped you along the way or would have helped you along the way? I would say I've been very fortunate because I had really effective supervision. So it, it, it definitely, I've felt uh, supported and, and nurtured and it enabled me to look at those, that next step um, on the journey really and, and what I wanted to do next. I think also seeing that um, the networking may, may not be within your immediate department um, is something that I think is really valuable. Um, and actually, the difference is now um, that it's easier to connect with people. Um, so, you know, look at us today, <laughs> chatting yeah. um, in, in different locations, uh, whereas when I started off, if you were going to these regional you know meetings it could it was after work you know you weren't given time to go within the in the work setting and so within work time and you know you may be having to travel 45 minutes an hour you know that there are barriers of course to people if about transport about other commitments um so I definitely would say to people um you know networking if there are opportunities that are available um, you know, really try to 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 participate and and don't think that you need to feel that you're an expert in whatever you're networking in, um, because you you know everybody's experiences are really valuable. I think that's a beautiful thing about the occupational therapy community as well, isn't it? We're all kind of inherently nurturers. Um, have there been points where your river, your kind of career journey has turned or changed course in a way that you haven't anticipated? Uh, so definitely the um, moving into academia wasn't something that I'd thought, you know, if I do ask my 21 year old self when I qualified, would I have been, you know, working in the university I don't think it was something that was on, you know, I'd even considered really. Um, so definitely, you know, I think I'd, I think because of my role, I worked in rheumatology, as, as I said, and that there perhaps you're doing a lot of education to uh, the service users. So I think I had developed my um, teaching and learning skills. Um, so it, and you know supervising students and other staff members um meant that I could see that path a little bit clearer as I as I move through and I think also uh, working in um e the EDI um as well that that wasn't something necessarily I thought was going to be part of um and I think also the culture's changed I don't I don't imagine when I got qualified there was as many opportunities for for for, for looking you know about staff networking groups etc um so definitely that's been something that's um been an, a, a great opportunity and something I've really been um pleased to be part of so you're working kind of in EDI as part of your current role uh, was that something that you started in clinical practice and then kind of evolved into your current role or no actually um so I'm just sort of trying to think now so we, so from a clinical point of view I think you, you're always looking at what barriers people are experiencing and how you can enable people and I think I've just transferred that into looking at it from a an EDI perspective but again looking at change and thinking about the level of change you can influence really so yeah. structures so I suppose I've gone from um supporting supervising peer support from an EDI perspective as well to then looking at the structural changes we can make and so thinking about being uh, uh influencing the the wider community and so yeah I suppose it's been um there's been steps, but it wasn't something again that I necessarily I hadn't I wasn't a representative, you know, when I was clinical at all. Um, but again, I wonder whether 
you know, trying to think whether there was as many opportunities at that point as well, really. So um, it's been good that there are more opportunities available to people now. What's been most important or helpful for you in terms of your development and progression as an occupational therapist throughout your career? Uh, I think definitely I would say um, that support and that is being in, in, in different aspects, I suppose. So um, I've been really fortunate to have that really valuable supervision by colleagues who uh, saw the value of supervision. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, supervision in that way, peer supervision, so um, peer support, different levels of that. So when I was a um, band five um, in the peer support group, um, and then as I developed um, becoming a more senior member of the team, so facilitating those groups, people, and then, a, you know, first running my career, um, peer support for clinical specialists so so definitely looking at th those elements from a clinical point of view uh, but also I think support through networking as well so um so the network opportunities so whether they are um from a clinical lens or um or whether they're from um you know a characteristic that is in, important to yourself mm -hmm. um that's something I would recommend to to others communities and connections theme coming through again isn't it yeah, yeah. absolutely absolutely and I, and I think I think there's something that being part of the community then and seeing mm -hmm. if you are frustrated so we talked a little bit didn't we about uh, the institutions and if you're if they're going through change and if you're frustrated if you're part of a wider community then you can get support and advice and mm -hmm. so that then means you may feel that you can engage in that change and, and hopefully help to steer it. <laughs> but also, if you're unable to change um, that environment and it's having a negative effect on, for you, then networking can give you opportunities to see what other environments are available. Um, so I definitely think it stops you from, from being in a very narrow lens um and, and actually that's the the gain isn't it because you can see wider which opportunities then are available um but also you perhaps value sometimes the environment you're in as well um because you can benchmark it against other environments and think actually this is quite nice <laughs> <laughs> i was going to say as well that kind of um reciprocal approach to being part of a community as well you know that wherever a community has helped you or supported you you know you also contribute to that community as well and that in itself feels good yes absolutely yeah definitely you can feel good about yourself you can feel like you're helping others you can feel like you're uh, developing uh, the profession to support other people um, and all of those things really can enrich you and enrich your career and I suppose that leads me a little bit on to the fact that we've talked a little bit about steps, but steps doesn't need to be a ladder. You know, steps can be a, a, a longer journey. And, that you know, it may, might be that you're sitting as a band six and that's where you sit and you, you don't move um, up the ladder to the band seven because of your circumstances, the opportunities you have, but your lens may change. And then you're thinking about what are the networking opportunities? You know, is that about from a clinical point of view or is that about something that you've got a special interest in? Um, what are the networking opportunities within your institute? So it might be that you're becoming, um, as myself, uh, part of a, a, a network and within your institution so you can utilize your skills um, and develop your skills in a different aspect so it still is part of your career but it may not be the fact that you have got the next <laughs> promotion um, but you're bringing something else to enrich your uh, career and also the team that you're in because all of these networking opportunities, you bring something back to the team. I definitely agree with you as well. What do you wish you'd known as an early career OT or prior to joining the profession? 
kind of what would you say now to your early career self? Um, I think I'd probably say that um that there'll be there'll be periods of time perhaps when you have rapid 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 change and mm-hmm. there'll be periods of time when it may be that it feels that you're static for a period of time but actually you're not static you just it's just a pause isn't it that it's just that the flow of the river if we go back to your yeah yeah uh, thinking about the river that the flow of the river sometimes will be very fast and other times it might be slower but see that sometimes the slower speed of the river as an opportunity as well because it might mean then that you can engage in other activities um that will enrich you um so i think that's something definitely that um i i i found myself that i didn't quite understand at the beginning of my career so you mentioned kind of maternity leave as as your opportunity for your your river to slow down your flow to kind yeah. of pause a little yeah Can you give an example of of when it's been the opposite kind of when you've gone through the white water <laughs> yeah yeah so I so I suppose the the, the rapids happened when I first started um, okay. working that um I changed uh trust quite quickly I changed um different into different job roles uh quite quickly um which in in uh, which then led to promotions so um so that was quite rapid and then it was quite a contrast then to have a to have a, a, a pause from my career. Home life was very busy. I was going to say, <laughs> um, but of course it did mean there was a pause in in career wise because I was fortunate enough to be able to take some maternity leave. And since then, I would say there has been times when there's been again the a slower flow of the river. Um, because I mean, some caring responsibilities, understanding that that's okay, um, and that it, it may be that you're having to um, uh, understand that, and that can be um, mm-hmm. that can be a process. Again, if we're thinking about it being a river, um, that you know, it's likely that that river might the flow might become rapid again, and and actually. Having a, a moment when it's a little bit slower is actually can give you opportunity to be part of different things as well. Kind of pausing to admire the view and the scenery a little bit as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, and and I think perhaps it, it gives opportunity to invest in different aspects as well, um, which in turn of we can enrich you which then may mean that it gives yourself more opportunity for that career progression Mm -hmm. or opportunities it doesn't have to be moving up a ladder it could be moving into a different environment as well what's next for you well I think it's been really great to be part of um uh, working with the uh, RCOT um, and being part of these networks as well um, and looking at from an EDI lens and it's, it definitely has informed my teaching at the university um, which has been really really uh, beneficial both ways I think again mm-hmm. bringing something back to the team um, but also bringing the skills from the team to these different networking opportunities so um, I think that's probably where my lens is at the moment. Um, but let's see, there could be some other opportunities as we're moving through. <laughs> Consistently evolving. That's it, absolutely. <laughs> is there anything that you would have wanted to add today that we haven't discussed or to anything that we've talked about? I really like the idea of uh, utilising that the, the, the visual of, of thinking about the river um and I probably would say as occupational therapists a bit like you said before Hannah that we're very nurturing uh, but I just wonder sometimes if we're nurturing to ourselves mm. so <laughs> I think that's what I would I would uh, um would say to others is you know we're great at advocating for other people but perhaps just reflect that on yourself how would you nurture yourself how would you become an advocate for yourself if you're finding things challenging, 
what would you do to look at changing that environment or the way that you interact with the environment? Um, so I think probably being kind to ourselves and, um, you know, understanding those great skills that we have when working with other people and reflecting them on ourselves. Um, quick fire sentence to uh, kind of finish the sentence to finish. Being an occupational therapist is. Ooh. Um, collaborator of change. Ooh, nice. Mm-hmm. Thanks again for that, Rachel. It's really good to talk to you today. Thanks, Anna, for the opportunity.